2000 Toyota Corolla with a PO171 fuel system 2 lean bank 1 trouble code and we're going to walk through a procedure on identifying the type of lean condition that we have starting with looking at our short term and long term fuel trim. Okay, we're looking at short term, long term fuel trim on the top. Bottom left is the RPM. Bottom right is my bank one sensor 102. You see the O2 is fluctuating. Uh, I don't have this in graph mode. I got a pretty bad reflection. So we're going to do the best we can here. Um, but what we want to look at with these two fuel trim numbers looking normal is we're pretty confident that our PO171 trouble code is not a vacuum leak. A vacuum leak is going to have real bad fuel trim numbers at idle and will improve with higher RPMs where something like a dirty mass airflow, which is what we're suspecting, or a low fuel pressure problem is going to have a number that's going to increase. Our fuel trim numbers will actually get worse at higher RPMs as opposed to a vacuum leak getting better. So go ahead and raise the RPM a little bit and let's watch these numbers. You see right away our long term is increasing, our short term is increasing. So the higher in RPM that we're going, uh, the computer is actually adding more and more fuel. And uh, you know it's not drastic, but the fact is you're looking at a total of about 15%. That's good fuel trim at 2,500 as opposed to uh, basically zero at idle. So we're pretty confident that we have a dirty mass airflow on this engine or a low fuel pressure problem. And our focus for this test is gonna be the mass airflow and what you do next. So we're gonna test drive this car and we're gonna look at the O2 sensor at wide open throttle. Again, I've said this before, the oxygen sensor isn't used at wide open throttle, but it still does produce a signal. And uh, we're gonna focus on the O2 and we're gonna focus on the mass airflow and see what kind of readings we have. One other important piece of information before you use this test is you have to make sure that your O2 sensor is functional, make sure it's switching rich and lean, which it is, so we can rely on this O2 signal. So what we're going to do now is we're just gonna wind out first gear. Again, I apologize for this camera work here, but I'll do the best I can. So we're watching our O2, the bottom left. That wide open throttle, go ahead and hit it. We're at wide open. O2 is lean. All right, come to a stop. We're gonna do it one more time. O2 is lean the whole time right there at wide open throttle. All right, this is a frozen picture of our first run and you can see that this bottom section down here where I have the cursor, that was the whole time we were at wide open throttle. That O2 was lean, 0 0.015 that whole time. We have a maximum RPM of 4200. We didn't quite hit red line so we can definitely go just a little bit higher. A max pulse width reading of about nine milliseconds, uh, and we hit a grams per second max of 47. It looks like we had a floor mat maybe in the way here for this TPS, we only hit 74%, so we're gonna do it one more time. All right, we're gonna do our second run. A Couple things you wanna be aware of is don't over rev the, the engine. Uh, be careful, watch what's around you. Um, and we're just gonna wind out first gear. Go ahead and hit it. We're at wide open. O2's lean, still lean, still lean, good. All right, we'll pause that, take a look at it. Okay, once again, frozen data, second run. You see where my cursor is, bottom left. The entire time that O2 sensor is lean in this picture, uh, is when we were at wide open throttle, throttle angle at 75%. Uh, I'm not too worried about that as far as not being 100%. I've seen cars only read 80% at wide open throttle, so that's not our concern here. Uh, our concern was, are we at wide open throttle? We were. Our O2 was definitely lean. This car is running lean under a load condition. We have a maximum RPM of 5,600. We hit a maximum injector pulse of 10 milliseconds, and we hit a maximum airflow grams per second of 65 grams per second. And so this is looking like a classic dirty mass airflow sensor. And what we're gonna do is go to the shop now and do a couple of uh, tests on the mass airflow itself, and then uh, show you guys how to clean it too. Uh, most likely dirty mass airflow. So we'll find out here in a minute. Okay, we're under the hood. 
and we're connected to the middle wire on the mass airflow sensor. That's the green wire. That is the mass airflow signal wire. And what we're gonna do is we're going to look at the voltage reading on the mass airflow, do a snap throttle test before and after cleaning this mass airflow to show you what to look for. I'm also gonna show the scan data as well, side by side next to the voltage of the mass airflow. Okay, nice feature of the Varus. I can look at scan data, which is this to the left, and I can look at live scope readings to the right. This is my mass airflow signal directly. I showed you the T-pin where we were connected. So, so this isn't processed data, this is actually live. I'm reading about 1.1 volts right now at idle on the mass airflow with a two grams per second reading. This is processed data. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna snap the throttle as rapidly as possible, it's wide open, watch readings. And what you just saw, this is processed data. We hit 57 grams per second at the peak of that. Um, I only chose the airflow grams per second because I wanted to speed up the data process. You can't get this kind of reaction if you're looking at 50 different data pits. So I'm only looking at the airflow. Uh, pretty good update. 57 grams per second was my peak with a peak voltage of 3.4 volts at the top of that. And that's what we're looking for. And uh, that's not good enough. Uh, numbers I teach my guys, you want to see at least four volts on a wide open throttle snap on most of these analog type mass airflows, if not a little bit more. So we're going to pull the mass airflow sensor out now. We're going to take a look at it and uh, see how dirty it is. And I'll show you how to clean it. And then we're going to retake all these shots again and show you the after effect of this. All right, here's the mass airflow sensor removed from the car. And uh, what you're looking at uh, on the side right here, this is actually an intake air temp sensor. Uh, that is not the hot wire that we're worried about. Uh, in fact, we're not worried about that at all. The hot wire is down inside of this, kind of tough to show you. Uh, I'm gonna do the best I can. Um, down inside of that, you see two resistors. There's a hot wire and what they call a cold wire used for monitoring uh, the flow through the circuit and um, really tough to show you the contaminants on this because uh, camera angle here, but uh, I'm gonna clean it and then we're going to See the result afterward and all I'm going to use is uh, Some carb clean or brake clean and a real soft brush and I'm gonna just dust that off real good and and uh, I'll try to give you an after shot. I don't think you're gonna be able to see a difference though. There is some contaminants on here Honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, but we'll, again, we'll see the result after we're done and whether or not we fix this car. Uh, because I couldn't show a real good picture of that one and where it was located, this is actually off of a GM and this is a case study I have in my book. And what you're looking at uh, before and after, you see the contaminants on these two resistors before and you see the contaminants after. That's really what you're going after. The, the one we just looked at on this, on this uh, Toyota uh, is not quite as bad as this, but there are contaminants on it. When we're done, we want it to look like this picture to the left. All right, here's the after. Make an attempt at showing you those two resistors down inside. Uh, and they're real clean now. Again, I just used a real, real soft, small brush and some carb clean. Make sure it's nice and dry before you put it back in. And uh, we'll see the after result. Okay, this is the after cleaning the mass airflow. We got an idle reading that isn't much different, 1.1 volts. Uh, I did this previously at a max of 3.9 volts on a snap and at a max of 77 grams per second. So you see an improvement there and I'll show you what it looks like. See if we can hit those numbers again. Three point nine one eight, seventy-seven point six. Scan data, baud rate, a little bit slow. So when I'm not when I snap it, I'm not catching the peak every time. Eighty-four point three two on a peak. 
3.91 peak voltage. I like that, that's a fix. We're gonna go take it for a test drive and see what our O2 looks like at wide open throttle. See what those numbers look like again on a test drive. And I believe this is a fix. All right, we got the repair done. We believe this car is fixed. We're gonna take it for a test drive and see for confirmation. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is um, to look at your freeze frame data when you have a trouble code like this. When you have a 171 trouble code, as you can see, and this is our freeze frame data I'm looking at right now, I see that this fault occurred at around 3,000 RPM and my fuel, uh, long term fuel trim was positive 33%. So this car is running lean under a load type condition and um, I use this to help guide me on what type of lean condition. If it's an idle problem, low speed, low RPM when you have a 171 code, then you're looking for a vacuum leak. If it's under load with higher RPM and higher speed, um, then you're looking for dirty mass airflow or a low fuel pressure problem. So again, forgot to mention that, very important piece of diagnostic information as far as direction and where you're going and what type of lean condition you have. This data capture does match a dirty mass airflow as we found. And again, we're gonna go for a test drive and see the result of the test drive after cleaning the mass airflow. All right, we're getting ready to do the after test. It's got a lot of glare on the screen. I apologize for this. I'll pause it and we'll talk about it in a second. Go ahead and hit it. O2's rich the whole time. Perfect. Perfect. Let's pause this, take a look at it. All right, this is the paused data of our last run. I, again, I apologize for the glare on the screen. I, I'm not much I can do about it, but you can see on our on our run here that our O2 uh, at wide open throttle, the O2 is rich the whole time, and we're over 900 millivolts, and we see uh, peak RPM, so we match what we did before, 5700, and we see a pulse width of 12.3 milliseconds. We picked up. Uh, quite a bit there, right? We were at nine milliseconds before, I think, and um, just matching our our uh, airflow from before as well. We're at 82.46 grams per second, where I think we we're 40 high 40s, low 50. Major improvement on drivability. It revs a lot better. It runs a lot better. Dirty mass airflow confirmed using the O2 wide open throttle. We are definitely getting enough fuel now. Uh, that's a fix. So, um, dirty mass airflow sensor, direction, again, PO171 trouble code. We looked at our freeze frame data. Freeze frame data indicated it was a load condition lean problem, not an idle condition lean problem. So we went toward the direction of either a mass airflow or fuel pressure problem. Mass airflow is the next easiest test to do. I showed you the tests under the hood, what to look for before and after, significant change, significant change on a test drive too, and that's a wrap. Okay, one last piece of information that uh, I use frequently, and, and I apologize, um, uh, sometimes I overkill these videos and show too many different techniques at once, but, but I think this is important to show. Um, this gives you confidence to give the car back to the customer. And what we did is we took it for a drive, mid throttle, if you remember what our freeze frame data was, our freeze frame told us that it was a 3000 RPM part throttle lean condition. So what we did is we, we drove the car and we were at about 30% throttle opening and about 2100 RPM. And notice the long term fuel trim command during this time is adding 28% fuel. That would make sense, that matches our lean condition. The memory is still adding fuel. But now, at the same time that was going on, the short-term fuel trim is reading negative 20%, and so it's taking the fuel away, and it's countering what the long-term memory was saying. And so what you're watching right now is the process of the computer relearning, and uh, I like to see that because that makes me feel comfortable. Uh, short-term that is countering what the long-term memory is, uh, that's beautiful, that is absolutely a fix. Uh, this car is not going to come back. So just another little piece of information to use. Don't be in a rush to wipe out the computer's memory. You know, leave it alone. Go test drive it, match the conditions, and watch your fuel trims to know if you fix the car.